welcome to you who call upon the name of Christ. We gather tonight to recall the story of the night that Jesus was betrayed. Are you prepared to come to the feast of Jesus the Christ, whose life was poured out for you? Are you able to watch with Jesus as he prays in the garden? Indeed, to struggle yourselves to be in unity with God's will for you. Then let us praise God even in this hour of darkness. Let us pray. God of all grace and steadfast love, greatly is your name to be praised in all the earth. Bring us to this feast of remembrance with open hearts. We pray in Christ's name. become a foretaste and a promise of love made real and a world made whole, they need a story and a blessing and a people who believe. It would not have been God's table if they hadn't all been gathered around it. The betrayer and the friend, the power hungry and the justice seeker, the faithful and the fickle. When Jesus poured the wine and the bread was broken, when everyone could eat, the outcast and the beloved, the arrogant and the gracious, the wrongdoer and the wrongly done by, the table 
became a foretaste of love made real and of a world made whole. Your company at the table, it will include the betrayer and the beloved, the wrongdoer and the wrongly done by. It would not be God's table without them. And the promise is that when you are together, when you tell the story and give the blessing, when you break the bread and you pour the wine, you will discover a foretaste of love made real and a world made whole. Let us pray. Holy God, over this bread and this cup, we offer thanks for the many blessings that fill our lives. This bread that nourishes and fills and empowers us to be who we are. This cup that replenishes who we are as well and fills us. We take this bread and this cup knowing of the love and joy and grace and hope that is presented to us through you. May this bread and cup fill us and remind us of your love. In your holy name.
I am one of Jesus' disciples. I was in the upper room with Jesus. He washed my feet. We ate together and shared words I didn't quite understand. Then he invited me to go to Gethsemane with him while he prayed. I was so excited to go, but I couldn't keep my eyes open. He was upset when he got back, and he woke us up twice as he prayed. In our world, it is still difficult to remain awake and focused on Christ when all he asks is that we pay attention. We are sometimes still confused by the words we read and hear. We are called to step out into the world to wash the feet of those around us in new ways. Let us ask for God's forgiveness. I was with Jesus in the garden as we were headed home, and there he was, Judas, with a number of soldiers and men from the priests. He kissed Jesus on the cheek, and the guards grabbed him. And I was scared and angry, so I drew a sword and lashed out in violence. When Jesus stopped me, I was trembling and he told me to go. So I and the others ran as they took him away. If we are honest, fear, anger, and lashing out in violence is still something that many of us live. With today, we are too busy running from Christ rather than living in his peace. Jesus calls us even when we are stressed out, angry, and afraid to take a breath and to pause. Let us ask for God's forgiveness. I'm John. Jesus called me and I followed him. Last night, I leaned my head against his shoulder and listened to his words, words that came from God. His words always spoke of the love of the one who sent him, but he won't speak to those who accused him. There were no words of hatred or revenge. He spoke the words of God, and now those words are being silenced by the violence of men. The word of God is still silenced by violence and cruelty. The word of God is still stifled by fear and embarrassment. For the times when we have stood by and allowed the word to be suppressed and silenced, let us ask God for forgiveness. I am Mary Magladen, and Jesus called my name, and he loved me. His touch brought me back to life. To touch him now would only make his agony worse. I cannot say goodbye. They have wrenched him away from me and nailed him. Nailed him, nailed him to a tree. My heart breaks with the pain of such a parting from the one I loved. Those who love are still wrenched apart by cruel hands. There is no chance to say goodbye. There is no way to ease the pain of parting. For the times we have been immune to the pain of refugees, ignored the cries of those in agony of separation. We ask God's forgiveness. I am Mary, Jesus' mom. A sword shall pierce my heart. Where did those words come from? Echoing round and round my head. A sword 
shall pierce my heart. And yet, the Lord has done great things for me. I do not understand. My spirit rejoiced in God, my Savior. He looked on my loneliness and raised me up. And now my son, the promised one, is raised up in agony and abandonment. My God, my God, why have you forgotten me? Oh God, our God, Why have you forgotten us? People are still standing at the foot of the cross, sharing the agony of those they love witnessing the anguish of abandonment by those who could have made a difference, the people with power and authority. They wonder, where has God gone? So for the times when we have allowed people to be abandoned to evil forces, when we have failed to act or to speak on their behalf, we ask for God's forgiveness. I, a simple thief on the cross, I hurt. Nails through my hands and feet. Death come quickly. The one they call Jesus, he doesn't deserve this. It ends here, no hope. I don't want to die. I don't want to be lost forever. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. To lose hope is the worst enemy. To be afraid of oblivion, part of the human condition. To call on the name of Jesus is a sign of hope in despair. For the times when we have lost hope and given way to fear, failing to call on the name of Jesus, for this we ask for God's forgiveness. I'm a soldier. It's just a job, not the best sort, but part of the job is keeping order. We can't have people going around preaching revolution. If they won't keep quiet, then the law has to take its course. My job is to make sure it's done efficiently. This one's different though. I'm not sure how. Not many of them ask for us to be forgiven. Makes you think. It was when he did that, asked his father to forgive us. This one's different. Maybe he really is the son of God. God so loved the world that God gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the son into the world not to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Savior, you know what it's like to walk in darkness. You know what it's like to experience fear. You know what it's like to feel alone and abandoned. You know what it's like to experience death. And you did all of that on our behalf to show us your great love, that there is nothing you would not do to pour out your love for us. So in these next days ahead, help us to remember all that you have given so that we might know and love and follow you. 